I'm Tim Brander, welcome to Capital News, and welcome Representative Jennifer Johnson of Anchorage, who is co-chair of the House Finance Committee, uh, very involved in events this session. So welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Jennifer, this, just any comments you have about this year, how things look, uh, how things are going? Um, well, as always, I look forward to working with the other body and, and working with our governor, and I think I hope everybody is interested in, in getting out of a session as soon as possible. Um, the, um, our caucus is built around having a, a budget that leaves the House floor that doesn't go into savings. Um, so you'll see that again this year, um, which means that it's, it's a, gonna be a pretty flat budget. Um, um, from our original budget last year, and um, um, yeah, then we will have go into negotiations with the other body and with the governor as far as how much to go into savings or if at all. And how much the permanent fund dividend will be? <clears throat> right, because yeah. our budget um, is yes, exactly. Um, and there's still, assuming even a modest permanent fund dividend like we had last year, there's still a deficit that has to be dealt with. Right. I mean, actually, right now, if we just took the governor's budget, um, we have a surplus without the dividend. Without the dividend. And, and that's in the 500 millions. So um, um, if you just did a, a net dividend, then you wouldn't have a deficit. Um, but you know, as I say, we have to negotiate with everybody on that. There'll be a lot of discussion about this. A lot of session. lot of discussion. Yes. What is the uh, <clears throat> what is the chemistry this year? It seems seem to be a lot calmer than they were last year. The governor well, came in guns blazing last year, and he sees just things are different. Right. I mean, first of all, last year it took us 30 days for the house to get organized, and um, I actually was trying to organize the house months in advance, but it was around this concept of not going into savings. And it took that long for a majority of people to agree to that. Um, this year, we don't have that discussion. It's, it's already there, so that, that helps. The governor is, um, um, basically what the governor, for the most part, what he's done, he um, put in, back in most everything that he had cut last year. Some of it he, he needs to. One of the bigger cuts last year was in the um, Medicaid budget. And um, I think what's been learned there is the Medicaid budget is an arrangement and agreement with the federal government. And so you have, you have this agreement and you can't cut it. You have to negotiate with the federal government on how you address the situation. So it's not, it's not a budget decision. It's a policy to policy, government to govern it de decision. Um, so it takes longer. And it gets complicated because even something like adult dental services, which um, is a, officially it's an optional program. So the governor, people thought we could just eliminate it. And then we found out that we, we couldn't. Couldn't eliminate it because it's all part of our state plan, which is yeah. in stone. And, and, and the only way you can eliminate it is if it saves money and, and I think what happened is they found out it was more expensive to eliminate it than to offer it. So it's, it's you know, and, and some of that comes with a new administration and learning. Um, that being said, as I say, I think we've got probably largest, could have one of the largest supplementals um, in the history of the state. Um, I'm not sure I try to, I, I guess I need to look it up. I'm trying to go by memory, but it's, a, it's going to be a large supplemental. Well, one of the, one of the big things would be the firefighting costs. In, right, and then, you know. and then the huge Medicaid, yeah. putting all that back in. And that's all now back in the governor's budget. So there will, you know, from the budget that was eventually the, the final budget after the vetoes, um, it will be increased because of those items that, um, particularly in Medicaid. Yeah. One of the um, things people are concerned about is we, we don't seem to have any money for a capital budget ever. And no. how, we can, how we can deal with that with right. a big deferred maintenance backlog. And right, no, I, it, it is. It's, we're, we're not doing the capital, we're doing a very bare minimum capital budget that basically does our match with uh, the federal government. You know, 
you and I know we've been in conversations for 40 plus years on having a fiscal plan. We now, we've had a fiscal plan for one year. We're going on our second year of a fiscal plan. And the fiscal plan is our revenues. Um, so because, I we're, because we're out of savings. <laughs> we're out of, and, and, and it's, you know, I have no interest in going into savings beyond what we absolutely have to go into. So now we have to now start, you know, I think there will be savings in state government just as government changes on how it operates. Um, you know, I, paper and pencil takes time. Paper and pencil and loading it onto a complete computer takes time and has errors. You know, as we become digital, there's gonna be savings there. I think our department of administration is gonna show quite a bit of savings. Is it in the hundreds of millions? No, but it's in the millions. So, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, and, and that's compounded because it would get more expensive over the years. Yeah. Um, I'm just hoping that in this fiscal plan of, of revenues, um, the capital budget does start getting um, a little larger light shined on it. A little bit of money. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I mean, this is apparent to me because just even walking around Juneau, I can see, uh, you look at some of the state office buildings, you see sort of rough edges, maintenance needed, and that's a result of that sort of thing. Well, you know, we had, we had a really good run. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there were a lot of capital projects, and most of those pro capital projects are now 30, 40 years old. Yeah. And, yeah. It's time to pay. It's, it's time to pay. And, and so it's, you know, I, I call it the maturing of Alaska. Yeah. We have, to, we have to make the tough choices now, and, and we'll come out of it. Um, and we will make the tough choices. It's just, it's, it just takes some time and effort. Well, well, Jennifer, thank you for coming down and talking with us. And uh, this is Tim Bradner with Capital Views. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to Senator Representative Jennifer Johnson. I almost gave you a promotion. I know. <laughs> promotion. Company.